Good morning and welcome to the 1480 Club for Thursday, May 5th, 2016. This is John Lewis. Joining me this morning in the studio, Derek Belinsky. Derek, how are you today? Very well, sir. Glad to be here. Good to have you here. And we have a very special guest on the line with us today, Mr. Mike Waffle, a Hornell native who is working in the NFL. Mike, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, and I just want to say to all, hi to all my family and friends in the area. Coming from Hornell, when we're watching the NFL, the biggest sport here in the country, you're one of ours. One of the biggest things to talk about, you are now with the St. Louis, well, geez, here's what we're going to call. again. Yeah, you are with the Rams, now located in Los Angeles. Well, you know, it's strange. When I came out of high school, I had a goal to live in all four corners of the United States, and my wife, Kathy, and I were able to accomplish that and then settle in the area that we love the most. And I always wanted to come back to New York. It seemed like I got stuck out in California forever, so I was able to do that at the Giants. I was back there probably eight months, and I wanted to go back to California. The weather spoils you to death out here, and both <laughs> our daughters were living out here. So that opportunity to come back to California in our retirement homes in Northern California, and to come back here, I have a lot of family and friends, Kathy's uh, family actually moved from Howard to Bakersfield, California, which is just over the mountain from uh, Los Angeles. And so we're uh, reuniting with a lot of family and friends as well in Southern California in here in Los Angeles. That's exciting. How long have you been there? When did you make your move? Well, once we found out, Kathy and I packed our stuff up and we moved our everything back into our home in the middle of March back in Northern California. And I was at the Raiders for eight years and we bought our retirement home up there. Great. We moved back in, into that home, and then we got kind of a three-way pattern that's happening with our team. And so we came down to Oxnard, California at the end of March. And what this is is a training facility that was here in the 80s and the 90s for the Los Angeles Raiders and, as of recent, the Dallas Cowboys. Actually, last training camp a year ago, August, uh, we scrimmaged Dallas Cowboys when I was with the St. Louis Rams here at this facility. So that's where I'm at currently. We're here training in Oxnard through the middle of June. And then once we finish, we pack up and we're going to be headed to vacation for about five weeks. And then we're going to be going to training camp in uh, UC Irvine. I was there when I was at UCLA. It's down in uh, Orange County in Los Angeles. So we'll be there for July and August. And then we're going to finish up where the Dallas Cowboys were when I tried out with the Cowboys back in the late 70s is in uh, Cal Lutheran. And we'll be there for three years while we build our training facility. So it's, it's, there's a lot of movement going on right now. It sounds like it. And it's also, you've been to a lot of these places, probably the most settled of everyone. No, we are. And uh, we're very fortunate. We didn't take an awful lot with us uh, when we went to St. Louis. And so when we went back in our house and we, we used to go there and, and vacation, you know, in Northern California. So we, we've already purchased a home down here. So we're pretty close to where I lived at when we lived at UCLA. We're one, actually one township over. So uh, it's uh, very familiar to us, and Kathy and I are, are settling in real fast. Moving on to the draft that we just watched last week. Well, it will be a week ago tonight. Thursday night was when the draft started. The L.A. Rams made a big splash by not only trading up to the number one pick, but going all in on a quarterback this year. Well, that's kind of why I was hoping I could delay this interview because I know when Derek tried to contact me, I didn't want to talk about the draft prior to the draft, you know, with yes. everything going on. But um, more than uh, most people, you know, on, on the Los Angeles Rams, I was one of the happiest. You know, I, I was at Cal Berkeley for six years prior to joining the Raiders. So we were in the Bay Area. I'm a big Cal fan, so I had a chance to watch Jared uh, Guff do his first drive in Memorial Stadium at Cal Berkeley when he was a true freshman and take the team right down and score. And I had dinner with him, you know, the week prior to the draft and, and uh, because I was a Cal guy and, and we, we talked and we had a lot in common, a lot of the people we knew there. You know, of course, we were in the Bay Area you know, the Raiders and, and Berkeley, or Oakland and Berkeley border each other, so I never really left Cal Berkeley. So uh, being a fan of his and a fan of Cal, uh, we knew a lot about him, and uh, we're, we're all really excited, and he's a special quarterback. 
that's a great story as well because you being a defensive line coach, you might think, yes, you know, that's the offensive side of the ball. So, you know, and I'm sure you're familiar with every player and all of the coaches, but you're right in on it. Well, my specialty is quarterbacks, right? Because I, what my my job is to, to make their life miserable. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, that's what I do. I study quarterbacks. Oh, I love it. Hey, coach, it's Derek. Derek, how you doing? How good, you doing? good, good to talk to you. Looking at the draft and. Uh, Goff was first, Higby, then Cooper, Hemingway, Forrest, and, and then Thomas to round it all out. None of that really affects your defensive line except for, the you pointed out, making quarterbacks' lives miserable, and you certainly did that with Tom Brady and the Giants. Is that a plus or minus that none of those guys are really on your defensive line? Well, it's a, it's a plus because we, you know, I have, this, is, this unit right here is probably the best unit I'll ever have, and I'll tell you why. The defensive end group that I have are very comparable to the defensive end group that I had at the Giants, and they're you know you can see it you know a lot of them are getting all pro recognition and those type of things, but the defensive tackle group is actually better than what I had at the Raiders, and that was a very special group also. So it's the best unit I've had, and we get the recognition now. We're in the four years that we've been here at the Rams, we lead the NFL in sacks. Uh, we have 186 sacks, and Denver's actually tied with us over the, that four-year period. So this group is very productive. But then when it comes to sacks and run tackle for losses, we have 420-some, and the second-place team has 380-some. So it's an extremely productive unit, and uh, so we didn't really need anybody, there. Coach, the last time we saw each other was probably about three or four years ago. You were riding around in a golf cart with Gene Mastin at uh, the inaugural, I believe, Hornell Football Golf Tournament. You know, and you always come back. You came back for St. Patrick's Day Parade, Sports Night, and countless other events. I'm sure that I may have left out or that I may not even know about. But what's it mean to you to be able to get back to the community and, you know, like, just for me, you know, handing me a business card or taking a picture with a youngster or signing an autograph for an older fan? Well, you know, the biggest thing is when I come in there, I try to be as humble and just be me because that's what I am. I've never let this NFL thing catch up with me. I'm still Mike Waffle from Hornell, New York. I've been in the NFL for 19 years. I've been coaching for almost 40 years. It was, it's been in, I was in college all the time prior to that. You know, I had a humble start at Alfred University. But, you know, so I've never got caught up into that part of it. And, and I've had more of a giving attitude. Now, we financially, we have for years financially given to the high school. And so the thing that makes me feel good is that I can contribute, or we can, Kathy and I contribute that way, and be able to help the people in the community. And I love Horn Al. Uh, you know, my, 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 uh, Mom is in the Marino family, so Marinos, I'm in that family on the other side of the Waffle family, so uh, we have a lot of family there in the area, and, and then my wife is from Howard, and she has an awful lot of family also in the area, so it's always great for us to come home and, and see them, but, you know, I, I just have a special heart, and um, I had a chance when I turned the bye week a, a year ago, I came in and I spoke uh, to the high school uh, during the bye week. And it was really a special event, and, and I just want to be able to try to pass my knowledge of you know experiences I've had onto others. And, and I love Hornell, and and it'll always be a special place for me. Coach, I did a piece again going back to Gene Maston and the other side of it, kind of the flip side, the family life, and and what it's like to be the wife of a football coach. Can you talk about some of the challenges that your family has gone through throughout your career? Well, I. You know, my head coach was Bruce Snyder, and, and I was his first captain on his first winning team at Utah State. I, I went to Bakersfield Junior College out of the Marine Corps and transferred there, but he's he was the one that was responsible. I never really wanted to coach. I got cut by the Cowboys. I was going to Alfred. I really was working on my master's. I, re, I just helped out. I, I wasn't really a coach coach, you know. They say that I was, but I wasn't, and I was going to the Atlanta Falcons, and Anyways, Bruce Snyder was responsible. He was Eric Dickerson's running back coach at the Rams. He left Utah State and came to the Los Angeles Rams, kind of ironic. But he's the one responsible for getting me into coaching. And I'll never forget, I was passing 
through the PE building at Alfred and secretary come running out. I never went into the football office and I was going to class and she says, hey, Coach Snyder from Utah State called you. So I called him back and he asked me, he says, Mike, what are you doing? And I said, well, I have a tryout with the Atlanta Falcons. And so he goes, well, I have a coaching job for you. And I said, well, I don't want to coach. I really (laughs) am not that interested in coaching, you know, And, and he said, well, it's a great opportunity for you. He goes, how old are you? And I said, because I was older and I was in the Marine Corps. And so anyways, his response was, he goes, well, Mike, you're 26 years old. You've got a wife and two kids. You're not that good anyways. Call me on Friday. <laughs> oh. and that's how I got into coaching. You know? <laughs> and it was kind of a neat experience it that way. And so I'm always indebted to him, you know, for getting me into this profession. And, you know, guys like Gene Masson, who, you know, how can you finish your career with three state championships? Are you kidding me? You know, and <laughs> right. it's outstanding. And Gene and I have been friends for years. And and so we still talk, you know, and it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's, a, it's a neat profession. It's really a, a very, very, very fortunate. Um, my kids love it. They're around it. My grandkids love it. They're around it. And so it's a, it's really a neat profession. It's better than working for a living. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, just finally for me, you know, we're in the heart of the NBA and the NHL playoffs. Any predictions as far as those go? You know, and the thing is, the, with me, is there is there a war going on? Because I don't even read the newspaper, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, so you, right, I'm you don't even boring, have time. I'm very boring that way. Very boring. <laughs> I love my New York Yankees. I'm very boring <laughs> otherwise. You know, so. <laughs> well, you're, you're, you're right back in football season still. Coach, one of the final ones for me, too. Growing up in Hornell myself, and I'm also a fellow Saxon, so, you know, love talking to you today. This is the first time we've ever spoken. Thinking back, I grew up as a Bills fan then, and I was 11 years old in 91 when the Bills lost that first Super Bowl. I've said this on this show before. I remember crying. That's, you know, you're at that that age. Now, bringing it up to where you are now, working under head coach Jeff Fisher, he, to me, my first memory of him is 99 with the Music City Miracle. He's the winning coach on that side of the ball. Do you want to speak to Coach Fisher at all your experiences with him? Well, I think, you know, it was funny because when I went back to the Raiders, you know, and the thing I always like, I I want to clarify this. I was never fired at the New York Giants. My agent came in, and Trace Armstrong had been the NFLPA president for 10 years, and he was a finalist for the executive position at the NFL executive position where D. Maurice Smith got it. And when he didn't get it, he wanted to be an agent. So he called me up and he says, let me be your agent. And so we made a financial decision to leave the Giants. And I went back to the Raiders. And it was really unfortunate that some media guy just kind of just blew it out of proportion, okay? Mm-hmm. So I, go, I went back to the Raiders with, in mind that I, Mr. Davis wanted me to come back and I was going to retire a Raider, and that's what I was going to do. And Jeff Fisher called me. And I turned him down. And so my agent called me two days later. And Trace Armstrong called me two days later and says, Mike, he goes, Jeff Fisher really wants you. I said, hey, Trace, I'm going to retire a Raider. He says, Mike, I played for you at the Raiders. It's the most dysfunctional team in the NFL, <laughs> and you need to be with Jeff Fisher, you know? And so yes. There I was in St. Louis. I did not want to, I did not want to go. I was very fortunate to be a uh, coach at the New York Giants, which was my first favorite team. And the Oakland Raiders, which everybody knows was my high school and favorite team forever. You know? And I'm very fortunate to coach at, that, at, at those two teams for 14 years. And so I'm so happy I came with Coach Fisher. He is one of the most consistent head coaches that I've had. I've learned an awful lot from him. And he's enjoyable to work for. And I couldn't be for a better man at the end of my career. And, and same with Greg Williams. Greg Williams is best defensive coordinator I ever worked with. I mean, he was outstanding. And uh, so it's, it's a great position to be in, and it's a great staff, and I feel very fortunate to be with Coach Fisher and, and this staff. Mike, thank you for your time today. Thank you for being so candid as well, and what a pleasure to be able to speak with you. This was great, and this is John speaking. Let me f- close with one final question. Where does your Super Bowl ring sit? Do you wear that often, or do you keep it somewhere special? Well, you know, Strahan designed it, and he got his way. And he said, it, he said it's a, a ten table ring. I said, what's a ten table ring? He says, if you go into a restaurant, you can see it ten tables away. <laughs> and, and and it is like that. Okay, it's very uncomfortable to wear. 
you know. So <laughs> okay, it, it's it's in a safe in Northern California. I don't get, I don't wear it that much. I, I'm I'm very fortunate to have it. Great. I'm well, sure if you talk to Gene, his are in a closet too. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? So I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank I want you. I want a new I want some new ones for Los Angeles. I got a lot of grandkids, you know. I want to I want to pass those rings around. You yes. Know? Well, <laughs> boy, what um, you guys had a great draft. You're in a new location, and it's a beautiful area. I was just out in California, right in the LA area, um, in January, so near Seal yeah. Beach. I wish you the best on the move in your new location and with the team. We'll be watching for sure, and we'll be keeping an eye on you as well. Well, appreciate it, and I uh, appreciate the, the uh, time today, and, and God bless everybody back there in Horn Owl, and, and thank you very much. Yes, thank you, Mike. Wow, what a gentleman, and thank you again. Have a great day. All right, you too.